Hey guys, welcome back to the K-State Blog Report. Um, we're going to get into season predictions here in a second, but first we're going to go talk to you guys about who you guys think the biggest surprise players or breakout players are on offense and defense. Cody, how about you go first? Well, uh, defensively, I'm looking for Tyson Hartman. He's going to be back there in that safety position. He had one year under his belt last year. He got burned on a few plays that went for touchdowns, but if he can learn from his mistakes from last year, study film, get his footwork down, not guess so much like he was doing last year. He would guess on a few plays and get burned. Josh Moore would do the same thing sometimes, but Josh Moore is now an NFL cornerback, so maybe Josh Moore was doing well, something. Well, Tyson Hartman, he started um, under Prince at the Texas Tech game. That's what was, that was his first year, so that was, last year was, it was a year. His first full yeah, season, season was last year. Okay. What about offense, Cody? Okay. I don't know. It's got to be Daniel Thomas, doesn't it? I mean, for breakout player? Breakout player. Surprise I mean, player. Surprise okay. player or something? Maybe Chris Harper or well, uh, Tremaine there's been a lot of there's been a lot of hype for Broderick Smith, and I think he has to live up to it. Kansas State needs a defined wide receiver. We didn't really have him last year, I and mean, you could go to Jerome Strew at, at the tight end, but he's not really the receiver we're looking for. We're looking for someone that can go downfield, like Brandon Bates would do occasionally, but Brandon Bates didn't have the size that Broderick Smith has, and Broderick Smith can run his routes and he can get five to seven catches a game. Maybe 110 yards here and there, 150 occasionally, two or three times. I think if, if he could get 10 touchdowns and then we could get maybe five or six more from the other wide receivers, our offense would be good enough to at least win us nine games. And uh, what about you, Paul? Well, I'm going to start on the defensive side as well. Um, I think the breakout player for K State, I, I'm going to go up front with the big boys. I'm going to go. With Big Prezel Brown. Prezel Brown added a lot of weight during the off season. A lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a lot of shakes is what he has. I, was gonna say, yeah. I know you like the big ones, I think I know who you're going to say on offense. Coming up you, you, you know what I'm going to say. You got a good, uh, you should be a fortune teller. But uh, yeah, I like Prezel Brown. I think Prezel Brown, who uh, I talked to him, said he's going to get 10 sacks this season. He and Cody Flutter are going to combine for 20 sacks. We've got to love the confidence. But I think that's a guy that's really going to surprise people. Converted tight end from last year. He's got a year under his belt playing the position. And when you're bigger and you're stronger, you can move people a lot better than you could when you're 265. So I look for Prasad. He ain't getting 10 sacks. Spoiler alert. But he, uh, I think he'll get a pipe about you know, three to four sacks and fill in nicely for Daniel Calvin, especially with Ray Kibble on the other side of him. But offensively, it's going to be trenches again. And it's a player that not a lot of people will are talking about a lot of people do know him, number 67, big Kenny Mayfield. <laughs> Watch out for this kid, 330 pounds, the guard side. That kid can eat a buffet and bust it here pretty quickly. So I think Kenny Mayfield will do a good job. I, I hope he'll be a lead for Thomas. And if Thomas, Thomas gets some of the publicity that we hope he does, then that, you got to think those big boys. Yeah, you got to think, think the big boy will get some credit. You know, a lot of those announcers, former offensive linemen, do like to give credit to the guys doing all the dirty work. So I look for Kenny to become the next All Big 12 performer for Kent State on the line spot following Nick Stringer's footsteps from last year. And if and if you're getting production from your wide wide receivers, that makes Carson Coffin look good. And that also takes a load off Daniel Thomas, mm -hmm. who last year pretty much led the team and best Big 12 rusher in the nation. See, that, that's what I kind of want to talk about that point. I was thinking about it. Last year, you really look at our team and we get down, and you're going, oh, God, there's no way in the world we're coming back from this. 21 nothing at Oklahoma. Yeah, a lot of amazing. I don't know how in the world we came back from that, but that's another story. But it, we, we have guys now on the field that it's not, I mean, just, it's not just Brandon Banks. Because Brandon Banks, love the guy to death, five foot six, great return man, but you can't have him as your number one receiver. Mm -hmm. you, you just cannot. Uh, you've got to have some more guys that are, that are bigger and more physical. Snyder did that in his first tenure. We, yeah. we had big, we had Darnell big McDonald, yeah. We had Quincy, Quincy Morgan, Morgan. Yeah. And, and Kevin Lockett, another big guy. And his, his little brother wasn't as big, but Kevin Lockett was a big receiver. So you, you get those guys out on the edge, and they can. Uh, I like possessions here. I'm not really much in speed and whatnot, but I like guys that can go out there, run the curl routes, and catch it, and it's going to be consistent. So you've got guys that can stretch the field and really convert on third downs, which we didn't have last year. You're going, well, hand the ball to Neil Thomas and hope the guy that he goes from 4-6 to 4-4 four, four in a matter of seconds and can burn the safety here. But that's where the difference is. You've got guys finally on the edge that can stretch the field. You've got Tannehill. Tannehill, 
That's another guy you got to watch out for. And Audrey Gallas, they say 280 yeah. pound tight end. I was a one star, two star kind of high school, really yeah. underrated guy, and I think he could really factor into this offense. I mean, my, my breakout players are all your fools. He looked absolutely oh, phenomenal yes. in one on ones and during the team practice at Fan Appreciation Day. Rocks were crisp. And then on the uh, defense, I'm going to go Brandon Harrell, missing pretty much the entire That's season. That's a good pick on my pick up Brandon. He, he's going to pick up right where Jeffrey Fritchell left off and where he left off his freshman season. Okay, guys, uh, let's get into uh, the Saturday's matchup against East Philly Bruins. They got a couple of guys missing on the offensive line. They initially were, were going to return an entire offensive line, but now uh, either they left the team or they're hurt. And uh, Kevin Prince, it was announced Monday that he, uh, by ESPN, that he practiced for the first time. So what do you guys think about uh, K-State's chances on Saturday, and uh, what's your prediction for the score? Well, if, if K-State's defense can hit him in the mouth, figurative, figuratively um, speaking, you know, coming back, and that, that'll, that'll be the trend, the tone center. K-State's defense can hit him in the mouth, get him scared in the pocket, get him, flush him out, get him on the run. He's not as good as a running quarterback as he is as a pocket quarterback, so if K-State can get him out of his element, the defense will win its battle. Offensively, they have a great secondary, UCLA does. Their corners and their safeties are they're, they're fundamentally sound, head to toe. So what K-State is gonna have to do, they're gonna find a way to exploit the gaps, running slants and drags across the middle. They're not going to get them long, but they may be able to nickel and dime them to death like you would do in a pre mid defense or such. So K-State, if they can, they, can, they, they can exploit the gaps and get pressure on the quarterback, I think K-State can win it and they can win it. I Personally, I think they can win it 27-17. See, it's kind of funny when you look at the UCLA team and Look at the Kansas State team, it's complete opposite. So you've got a Kansas State team that's loaded on the offensive line side. You've got a UCLA team that's, due to academic issues, due to more missions, due to injuries, um, really don't have the size and strength up front. Then you also have a UCLA team that's- that has no money back right now. Well, they, they have money back actually, they're very stacked at. They've got um, Jonathan Franklin, who's had issues, issues with fumbles last year, but you've also got Malcolm Jones, who was a five-star kid and also another five-star kid that was in, that's in the backfield. And I know their fullback is supposed to be really good. I don't know his name, but his full, fullback is supposed to be one of the best in the Pac-10 as well. Yeah, I mean, your skill positions are good. You've got a Taylor Henry, who got the West kid from Kansas over there. But I, I like games, and I think games are one of the trenches. And I think that's where Kansas State's going to do really well is you're going to have a very hungry defense that's so smash disrespected. Smash around football. You're going to be able to run down Thomas right up the gut because they don't have Brian Price anymore. Brian Price was a, a very good defensive lineman he wanted to be and that's why he was picked so highly in the NFL draft. And they don't return a lot of guys on that front line except for but one or two starters. So it's it's gonna be interesting to see how well guys will fill in, but I think games are one of the trenches. So look for a lot of Daniel Thomas and look for a lot of just pressure from Kansas State's front four because those guys are hungry. They, I was talking to Antonio Felder a lot, and you just heard the word disrespect tossed around by him and Prezel. And you, you, you got Brandon Hill. Brandon Hill is really You want an angry defense. Yeah. If you have an angry defense, it'd be like a Camel Soup commercial. Yeah. It'd be all over. Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, what's your prediction for the score there? Oh, score? I have 24 10. 24 10, can yeah. you say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great points, guys. Uh, I agree the defense is going to do well against them in the trenches. I really like. Uh, I'm talking about filling on one side with the speed and then on the other side with the strength and Brandon Harold. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, let's get into uh, season uh, prediction for K State. What do you guys think the Bengals are going to be at the end of the season? Who do you think is going to win the Big 12 uh, championship game? Because this looks like it's going to be the last Big 12 game, uh, championship game of the year. Of the, mm, for the future. Or for the future, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. And uh, who do you guys think is going to win the national championship game? Cody, let's start off with you. Well, where do I begin? Kansas State, there's. There's a couple of question marks, and if we were playing a game of space, there'd be two strong and a couple possibles. Now, a couple possibles could be anywhere from nine and three to seven and five to six and six. Now, if we're at the nine and three, we're holding Joker Joker Deuce Ace, and that is Carson Coffin plays well. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I just got lost by that. But I, I, see where, I, I, I see where you're going. Just keep going. Okay. <laughs> game of spades. Joker Joker Deuce. You have your ace, king, queen, like regular spades. Yeah. Joker, Joker, Deuce are the new trump cards. Big Deuce, little Deuce. Okay, we know the game. Just, just, okay. just, just yeah. give us your prediction for the season and the Big 12 and the National Championship, well, please. Why don't we just start this part over so I can explain it so it makes more sense? Okay. All right. 
three. No, 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 let me explain. Okay. When you're playing in spades, you have your standard white guy spades, which is ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, all suited. Okay, when you play joker, joker, deuce, you throw in three more spades. Those are all three spades. You got the big joker, the little joker, and the two of spades, and then ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, seven. So your ace is no longer a guarantee. And you there's your king. Okay, just, just go on with your, with your prediction. I mean, I gave it just whatever. Like, it's I mean, convoluted, man. You just wasted a minute and a half over time. No. So, so just get into. Uh, yeah, keep going. Okay, prediction for Casey. I, I really hope we go 8 to 4. That's my. Uh, with my purple glasses on, that's what I think we'll do. Well, I, I, I would say 9 and 4. 8 and 4. 8 and 4. 8 and 4. And then bowl game, you think we'll. Bowl game, yeah. Uh, I, I think we'll probably finish with 7 and 5. Um, I see wins at KU. Baylor, Colorado, then go 4 0 in time time. And um, I, if we go even forward, we're going to steal one thing against Texas or Nebraska. That, that's my feelings on that. Um, but for Big 12 champion, OU, baby, that's all it is. Bob Sweeps has the most talented team in the Big 12 easily. They return Landon Jones, return to Marco Murray. The offensive line was banged up last year. They get some guys back on the uh, front. And then you've got Jeremy Beal, Travis Lewis, in the defense. Then you got DeMarco Murray. You got DeMarco Murray. Yeah, so, I mean, you've got a loaded, loaded team. Ryan, Ryan Rawls is as well. So, just a very, very good team. And, and eight and five. I mean, they went eight and five while losing a ton of talent. So, Bob Stoops knows what he's doing. And Bill Snyder had a, a good find when he got him from Kent State. But, national championship, I'm going to go look in the Big Ten. I think whoever wins the Big Ten. Is going to be, I, I think it's going to be Ohio State or Iowa or Wisconsin. I, I don't know which one it is, but whoever wins the Big Ten is going to uh, play the national championship against the Broncos. I think Boise State's going to go to the national championship oh, game. They're going to be Virginia, going to be Virginia Tech and Washington, D.C. They're going to be Oregon State. Uh, Oregon State struggles in September of the non con portion of the season. And beyond that, Kellen Moore is just going to. Touchdowns all over the place. Cody? I would love to see Boise State in the national championship. Unfortunately, I don't think they'll get the respect they deserve playing in that, you know, playing where they play. They're three, man. They're number three already. They don't have to be very far to climb. Okay. But, I, I mean, the non-BCS, I mean, I would like to see Boise State. They were solid last year. They beat TCU. Mm -hmm. And they looked good everywhere. And, and they just returned a ton of stuff. Everybody came back. Yeah. And as you said about more, it was just one hell of a team Boise State has. But I think Big Ten is going to have one of the guys, and it's either going to be Ohio State or it's probably going to be Iowa. Yeah. I think those are my two from the Big Ten. And that's because the Big Ten, they usually get, they usually don't have to play as hard non-con schedules. And usually they have enough points in their conference. If you win the Big Ten, you're almost guaranteed a national championship spot. Unless, you know, you have a, a Big 12 team and an SEC team that are both really good that might play each other. Like we had last year, we had Alabama and we had Texas, and Ohio State was left out. But if you only have one of them strong conference, Big 10 almost always guaranteed a spot. And for the Big 12, though, for K-State, I think they can go 9-3. I think we can beat UCLA, Missouri State, Iowa State. Nebraska, Texas, and Mizzou are my biggest question marks. I, I don't I don't think we'll beat Mizzou and Columbia. Who are our three losses? That's what, that's what I want to know. Who are our three losses? Mizzou is one of okay. them. Texas or Nebraska or both is okay. what could happen there. I see us winning one of the two. I see us beating Texas and losing to Nebraska. And that's because Texas, the quarterback position, I, I'm still concerned about that. Nebraska, we know who their quarterback is. We know who their running back is. We know who their safety is. No, they haven't announced who their quarterback is yeah, at no. this time, but it looks like it's, it's exactly. exactly. It's going to be exactly, without a doubt, probably. But okay, so you Big 12 champion then? I think K-State can win the North. I don't know if they can win the Big 12. I think OU has the best chance to win the Big 12. They will go through the South with probably one loss, and that could be to Texas. I don't think they'll lose to Texas unless they take them for granted, but it's a rival game. Texas is not the same Texas team. I think they can go sweep the South, sweep the North, maybe only have one Big 12 loss. 